Hello everyone. Yes, I'm back in the same shirt again <laughs> because you know I'm not getting dressed and doing my hair and doing my makeup multiple days in a row, right? It's like one day out of the week and it's film while you can. And I know you guys know, like if I change my top, you're too smart. You'll know. So no, no secrets here. I'm filming this all the same day. So today's card video, this was actually um, a card I made back in January and I was so excited to share it. I edited the video. I uploaded it. I wrote the blog post. I was good to go. And I went to create the supply list and I realized that the stamp set, the main stamp set that I had used wasn't even released yet. So um, I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll share it in February. No problem. February was my uh, capsule paper crafting challenge. This video didn't really fit in there. And then March, I got sick. So here we are in April, three months later. I'm gonna share this card with you because I think it's fun and uh, it has a really fun way of creating your own banner around a greeting with watercolor. So I didn't want to just completely ignore, I wanted you guys to see this card. So here we go. Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video. I am not hopping on camera to show you my face today because I'm in a bit of a hurry. I just wanted to do some crafting and I've got my mic on so I can talk you through it. So this is going to be probably mostly all in real time unless I get to some coloring and I need to speed things up. But I've got a couple hours before I have to run off. So I'm gonna do some no line coloring, some water coloring with color pencils. Um, and I'm going to do it Kathy Rakusen style. Uh, I think I mentioned last week or the week before that I have been following along with her Coloring Challenge Road Trip online class. And I'm going to be using things that she recommends. So the stamp set I'm using today is this one from Mom Elephant. It's called Family Time. thought it would make a cute little card. Um, keep it very simple. It's just about the one image and the greeting that gives me you know, the opportunity to finish it all within the time uh, constraints that I have, um, but also do a little bit of coloring. So starting out with some Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press Watercolor Paper. And I'm doing hot press because, I don't know, I'm just not feeling the texture of a cold press paper with the colored pencils right now. So I'm going to do it on this hot press, which is much smoother. Putting it inside my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And these images are so dang cute. I don't even know if to use myself. Um, I think, I think, I'm, well, I like the bunnies, but the deer is really looking super cute too. Um, I think I'm gonna do the bunnies. I just love the mom elephant bunnies. That style is just too cute. All right, and I'm just gonna put this right in the center of this five by seven watercolor paper. And I'm going to stamp this image in Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink in the color Warm Glow. I have yet to use this. It's been sitting in my stash. Kathy swears by this color. Um, it's waterproof and also Copic friendly, so you can do it for all sorts of no-line watercoloring. So she says, it's amazing. I'm gonna go by Kathy's word. I saw her using it when we were filming the class. So I believe her. <laughs> it puts down just enough of a line so you can see it, but it will kind of blend into the background once you start coloring. All right, so for my greeting, I'm gonna go ahead and put the greeting on now. Um, I think I'm going to use I love you more than you'll ever know. That's the one I'm gonna to use today. And I'm going to switch to a black ink for this one, putting that centered right beneath the little bunnies. And my favorite black ink that's waterproof is Versifying Onyx Black, just because it gives such a sharp image. So that's the one I'm using. And I'm just barely gliding my fingertips over that. If I miss anything, I can stamp again. That looks pretty good, but I do want it a little bit darker than that. So I'm going to stamp again. And once again, I'm just barely letting the stamp kiss the paper. Just rubbing that over it. And then you get a nice, deep, dark black image, but it's not, um, what's the word? It's not like uh, ballooned out. It's not blown out with like pressing the stamp too much, which can happen because the these clear stamps have more give to them than rubber stamps. All the rubber stamps will do the same. Um, they have more give to them. So if you really press on the stamp, 
it can kind of uh, blur out the line and make it more bold than it actually is. All right, I'm using some Distress Mini Ink Cubes today for my painting. Um, Kathy doesn't paint with Distress inks. I don't think she has a full set. I feel like she goes straight to watercolors. But when I've done no line watercoloring in the past, I've really enjoyed using Distress Oxide inks, or Distress inks, actually. So that's what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you guys have seen me do no line watercoloring on Mama Elephant Bunnies before. I'm going to be using a very similar color palette just because I love it so much. I'm starting out with Scattered Straw, and I'm just smushing this onto this Art Impressions palette um, so I have color to work with. I have my cup of water right here, and I'm going to be using um, a fairly small brush today. Let's pick one out. I think I'm going to be using... Yeah, this works. I'll be using a number two round from Royal Langnickel. Adding a little bit of water to my brush. Making sure I have a paper towel on hand because I'll probably need it. I just hold it in my left hand. And I'm going to start by adding just a little bit of this color right on the edge of the bunny's face. where the shadow would be. I think I'm going to have the light source be from up here so the light is coming in from the top. So it will be much lighter on the other side of the bunny's face. Come up here and get the ears. It's very simple, no line watercoloring. I'm going to take that same color and Add it down here. It's, uh, I'll be adding some vintage photo ink on top, and that will really deepen up all of those areas. Okay, speaking of, I'm going to grab the vintage photo, smush that down onto my work surface over here, my little palette. I'm also, while I'm letting this dry a little bit, I'm going to grab some worn lipstick. I like to use warm lipstick on their cheeks, it's a nice rosy pink. And this is probably still, yes, it is still fairly wet. So I'm going to water down that worn lipstick a little bit and come in and just put a little bit of color right on the bunny's cheeks right in here. Use a damp brush just to soften it out a little bit. It's nice and rosy. Kathy loves her rosy cheeks on her images, so since I'm trying to uh, channel Kathy, I'll do the same. I'm going to zoom in even more so you can see this bunny. Now that you kind of know what I'm doing off to the side, you don't necessarily need to see my palette that I'm smushing the ink pads on. While I've got that worn lipstick, I'm going to paint up here. Just adding that over there on the side. I realized I missed this bunny's foot. I'm going to come down here and just add that color back in. That color is going to all be in shadow, so it's probably all going to be brown anyway, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to hit this with my heat tool just to make sure everything is dry before I go in with my next layer of color. A question that I get asked a lot about is, um, what exactly is no line watercoloring or no line coloring in general? I'm going to answer that for you right now. I'm coming in with some vintage photo distress ink and I'm adding just the smallest amount of this right on the edge of the bunny, adding quite a bit of water to my brush. And I'm going to try to get this to just kind of fade out just a little bit. Just adding this shading to the bunny. Okay, while I add the shading to all the different areas, um, no line watercoloring, when I started or I wanted to attempt some no line watercoloring, I was confused because I thought it meant you don't want any lines showing, you don't want any differentiation, um, which can be confusing because the best way or the best results with no line watercoloring is almost like you're creating the lines yourself, but with color instead of that stamped line that comes from the stamp. So for me, calling it no line watercoloring or whatever, actually refers to the fact that the stamped line 
is less visible because you're coloring around it and you're defining the line with your coloring. So it's not that there's no line at all because a lot of these no line watercolored images will have a line, like I'm creating this line down here at the bottom of the bunny's head. So if you think about that, like I'm going to be creating the lines myself, sometimes that's a little bit easier to understand. And it also encourages you to not be afraid to add a little bit of marker or colored pencil or whatever you need to help define that line and define the shape of whatever you're painting. I'm going to go ahead and just finish up shadowing all these areas on the bunny and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's the first bunny basically all painted in. I'm going to hit this with my heat tool to speed up the drying so that I can start painting the other bunny, which is right up next to the first one. So I want to make sure that the, you know, I don't accidentally paint into a wet area and they start mixing. I think I'm going to have the other bunny be more of like a white gray bunny. So I'm starting with pumice stone. And like I did before, I'm just going to start on the very bottom of the bunny's face and just start to work up. Now there's, this bunny is a lot in shadow. So there's gonna be quite a bit of shading on this one. Now, as I'm adding this on, it's kind of losing the definition of the bunny's face, but don't worry, I can go back to that stamp set and um, I can just use it as a reference for where I need to draw the face on. And when it comes to painting very small images like this, and you need to add the face in, um, I have used a very, very tiny brush in the past to do that, but I find that just using a very, very thin lined pen or marker works just as well, and in fact, better in a lot of cases because you have a little more control over it. So don't be afraid to like, you know, mix your your coloring mediums. I'm going to be doing a little bit of colored pencils on this, so um, adding a little bit of pen isn't going to be a problem. You can do whatever you need to do to make the image look right. All right, I'm going to hit this with my heat tool to speed up the drying so I can add additional details. All right, I'm going to come in with Hickory Smoke. I thought about going straight to black soot, but I think that would be, well, maybe I will do black soot because Hickory Smoke isn't so dark. I'm going to go with black soot. And this bunny is so tiny, I'm going to switch to an even smaller brush. Um, that was a two that I was working with before. This is a size zero, it's just a little smaller. This is from the brand Raphael. Um, yeah. So I'm going to just add a, just a tiny bit of this black, the bottom of the bunny's face, wet my brush and immediately come in and start spreading that color just a little bit. Trying to get it not quite as stark. And I'm using a damp brush, not completely wet, just a little bit damp, and kind of massaging that color to get it to spread out. All right, and I'm also going to go back to the stamp set and reference exactly how that bunny's face looks so that I can get the shading just right. In fact, I need to add a little bit of that darker area to the side here before I move on, since the light is coming from that upper area. Shade the back of him. Really, I should say it's a her, because I think I'm gonna give this card to my mom. So it would be a mama bunny and a little baby girl bunny. All right, and I'm going to also shade up this side of the bunny's body because it is right up against the mom. So I wanna make sure that it's shaded right. Now I'm being very concerned about the light source, but you know, as I was saying, Kathy, who is the inspiration behind all this coloring, she really is on a movement to tell people, stop worrying about the shading, just color for the fun of coloring. And I also believe that, but I'm, there's a part of me, you know, I went to art school. <laughs> I have an art degree, so I'm 
I'm, I think I'm always going to be slightly concerned about where the light source is and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, different approaches kind of makes me laugh, you know? So, so my little white gray bunny turned into a black bunny. Totally. Okay. So I'm to make sure I get his tail looking all cute or her tail. Keep forgetting. Okay, so I basically have this other bunny done. I'm going to go ahead and add that marker I was talking about, the really, really thin marker. Um, I'm going to be using a 0 .03 Copic Multiliner. This is the smallest of all the Copic Multiliner. You can see how itty bitty the tip of that marker is. It's gonna make sure I get those details in on the bunnies. All right, I'm going to be looking at the stamped image to see where like I need to draw in the face on each bunny. So I'm just going to very carefully, I can, good thing I can see some of it right now. Just gonna come in here and lightly draw those lines in. Just a little bit, just giving the bunny a face changes everything. I'm gonna use the same marker over the little whiskers. And this bunny's face is almost a little more squished, so I can't really see exactly where it was originally, but I will do my best. All right, so I have the little faces on there, just the really basic ones. And now I'm gonna do a bunch of colored pencil coloring. Um, I just wanna like deepen up some of the darker areas, things like that. Kathy always says, very, very sharp pencils, so I'm gonna be sharpening my pencils quite a bit. Like I said, you're, I'm defining the line. And doing this after you've painted is totally okay. In fact, it's just going to enhance your image. So I'm just going to be deepening up these colors. I'm gonna turn on some music and speed up the coloring process.
going to mount this on a card base and I'm, I'm finished. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm glad that it worked out. I was able to still share this video. I think it was worth the wait a few months later, but I think it was worth the wait because that image is so cute. Um, thank you so much for watching. So in the comments, I've been asking you guys to answer a question for me. And today's question is all about stuffed animals or um, like dolls or things like that. Tell me about an item from your childhood that was like your favorite something that you carted around everywhere. Maybe it was a blanket, maybe it was a teddy bear or a doll, something like that. Um, I remember in third grade, I had an amazing teacher, Ona Patterson, and she would have like themed weeks throughout the year. And like over St. Patrick's Day, it was Pattersonville, because you know, she was Irish. And <laughs> we each adopted a leprechaun and we wrote stories about our leprechaun. Well, I think it was sometime in the fall, she had Bearville. And each student, all of us in my class, we all got to bring a stuffed animal. It didn't have to be there. We all got to bring a stuffed animal with us every single day that week. And we wrote stories about our bears and we colored pictures about our bears. It was so creative and I loved that. Um, I guarantee that everyone that was in my class at Carl Sandburg Elementary <laughs> with Mrs. Patterson as a teacher remembers all of that. And she even took all of our worksheets and bound them into books for us that we got to take home. My mom saved all of my books. I think I have them in a box somewhere. My leprechaun, whose name was O'Reilly, and my bear. So in the comments, let me know about your favorite stuffed animal from your childhood or blanket or whatever. Let me know all about that. Let's think of some really good memories from a long time ago. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I've got two more card videos on screen for you to choose from to get some more inspiration. I hope you'll click through and continue watching. We all need a little bit of distraction these days, so I hope this card video can be a little bit of a distraction. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And I will be back very soon next week with more card inspiration and videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.